everybody welcome back to the channel i'm the beater boater also known as justin if you watched my last video where i took my rmx down the middle of coe you'll know that uh there was a breakup there was an end to that relationship as i struggled to fight that boat and get control over that boat and learn that boat and just ultimately realize that she wasn't the girl for me so to speak and so i have since moved back to a scorch I actually got the scorch in the back of my truck and I'm headed down to Montgomery Whitewater today to just paddle the scorch and and, and make friends with the scorch again. Um, so let's talk about creek boats and the decision making process that I went through, um, why I moved out of a scorch to the RMX and why I'm now back to the scorch from the RMX. So I think in order to really fully understand this and put all the puzzle pieces together and give you perspective, I need to talk about my creek boat paddling history. So first and foremost, at 45 years of age, three years ago in 2020, I started kayaking. And so I, I was a pretty sedentary guy. Uh, I lived on the couch. I was about 50 pounds heavier than I am now. And I had a great friend named Michael Chancellor who was my mentor in paddling, who talked me into going paddling one day. And the rest, as they say, is history. So my first creek boat was a hand-me-down that was Mike Chancellor's first, uh, well, not his first boat, but it was a Mamba that belonged to him. And so he wanted me to take a stab at the sport and he made me a great deal. He sold me a Mamba, a skirt and a paddle for like 500 bucks. And so the Mamba was literally my first girlfriend. She was my first adventure into whitewater kayaking and there will always be a huge amount of nostalgia for first boats, right? So if you're a paddler, you can probably relate back to that first boat and the love affair that you had with it simply because it was that vehicle that got you into the sport, that got you on the river, that was kind of like your first exposure. And you really don't know what you don't know about boat designs or styling or what you need um, a whole lot when you're new. You kind of take somebody's recommendation. Maybe you find a good deal on a boat. Most of us start in creek boats, so I started with a Mamba. Uh, she was awesome. Her name was Bertha because she had a big old fat bottom that took care of me. Um, and so... I loved that boat. Um, it, it, it was just a great boat and it helped me to get launched into the sport. And so I didn't really understand any of her weaknesses or flaws because I didn't know what I didn't know, right? And so every time something went wrong in the boat, it was my fault, right? And most of the time it was, but guess what? There were some inherent flaws to the Mamba that made it not such a great creek boat for some people. and. Um, I loved it for for about a year and a half and then I moved into a Piranha 9R2 and that boat was an absolute train wreck for me as a newer paddler because it was so fast. It was a very fast boat. Speed without control is always disaster and that's what happened for me. I was not um, really comfortable in that semi-displacement hole that the 9R2 had because I had sort of learned edges a little bit on the Mamba. Of course, Mamba edges were kind of strange. They would do some kind of funky things. You'd trip over them sometimes and, and get spun around. But I, I realized, I guess, when I got in the 9R2 that, hey, I'm an edge boat guy. Like, I like edges, and that's, that's my jam. Uh, 9R2 was very narrow. Um, it was very tippy. I was upside down in it quite a bit. Lots of swims out of the old 9R2. And then I um, I still had all, I still had actually had two Mambas. I had an 8.6 eight and an 8.1. And so I decided, hey, I'm gonna sell these Mambas. I'm gonna sell this 9R2 and I'm gonna get a dagger code. Like that's gonna be my jam. And so the pandemic hits, I sell all this stuff. I've got cash in hand, but nobody's got a dagger code for me to buy. And so I'm looking around and everybody is getting in the Scorch. They're loving the Scorch. The Scorch is cool. I was a little nervous about that because it was a very aggressive edge boat. And whenever people are marketing things that way, you kind of know, hey, this is, um, this is probably for an intermediate boater, which I definitely was not when I got into the Scorch. And so I went ahead and I was impatient. I couldn't find a code. I bought a Scorch and it was a game changer for me. 
I fell in love with that boat. I really liked the aggressive edging. There was something about the boat design and my paddling that just clicked and it, it took me to the next level. It got me to the Ekoe. I did uh, Tatuga Section 4 in it, um, the, the Pigeon, um, a lot of lot of rivers and, and, and things that, that uh, I had never run before. This boat kind of opened the door to that. I also paddled the New River Gorge in it, which was awesome. And so um, I had a problem with the Scorch, and this is it. I weigh right at the 200 to 205 pound mark, right? And so my body ergonomics fit great in a medium, but I was slightly overweight for a medium Scorch. And so I would feel the water line and the length of the boat in the water and getting pushed around a little bit. I would feel that. The bow would kind of sub out. I would get flipped a little bit more often than I liked in the medium scorch. And so I said, hey, I'm going to get a large scorch and that's going to be the answer. And so I got the large scorch and it definitely gave me the volume to get me riding high. Um, to riding up and over stuff, the bow's not subbing out, but my body ergonomics and that large boat just didn't really work well together. I never felt like I was really snug in the boat or connected to the boat. And it's a bigger boat that took more effort to lean and edge. And the medium, I could do that sort of inherently and very easily. And the large, I had to be very intentional about it. And so I'm trying to get to to the upper golly. I want to go to West Virginia. I want to paddle the upper golly. And so I got a little, I let myself get a little discontent with the large scorch. I told myself, hey, this isn't the creek boat for me. And I started looking around at other options. So let me give you this analogy, um, ladies and gentlemen. I had this great girlfriend and life was good, but I got bored with her and a pretty girl walked by the RMX. 86 from liquid logic and my head turned and I was already a little discontented with it And so I sold my scorch. I jumped on the new pretty girl, right? So to speak and When I got up close to her and spent some time with her I found out she was crazy And so I went back to my old girlfriend hat in hand and said hey, I'll sleep on the couch It wasn't you. It was me. And so I jumped into the RMX it is a beautiful boat. I'm sure there are paddlers who are gonna slay in that boat, but it just did not work for me. I was fighting and struggling to get the boat to track. Um, there was also something funky about the bow of the RMX. So the very front of the bow is very pointed. And then as that bow comes back a little bit to right about where your feet are is a little bit, it gets really wide. And so what that does in whitewater is, is it punches into something and then it comes up. Whereas the Scorch has this big wide bow. It's got these really nice wave deflectors on it. And when the Scorch, when you punch something in the mouth with the Scorch, it literally just goes up and over and, and stays online. And what I saw on my Akoi lap and I really didn't break that video down very well. I need to do that here. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So in double trouble, as I'm coming down double trouble in the RMX, I'm having a hard time tracking and lining up to the, to the wave. I find it, I line up, I go over the first wave and the curler in the second wave where a scorch would normally go up and over so the RMX punches in, and then the force of the water literally lifts me up, moves me over about five feet, and sets me down like kind of sideways to that last like whole wave of double trouble. And I was like, uh, no sir, I don't like this. And so let's take a look at that right quick. So let me give you another example of the same concept. RMX on the middle of Coe at Flipper. Same exact scenario. So I peel out of the eddy above Flipper. 
I tried to, to kind of mentally line everything up because flipper's sort of a blind entrance from the top. I get the boat where I want it to be. I come down over the drop. I'm right in the spot where I want to be. And whereas, once again, the scorch would go up and over the curler and the hole that is flipper, you'll watch the RMX penetrate it and then it absolutely just pushes it over to the left. And so let's take a look at that right quick. Okay, so that's, that's another example of what I didn't like about how the bow responded in, in bigger water and holes and curlers on, on the middle of Coey that kind of told me that, hey, I don't really like this. I don't like the way this is handling. And then here is the other thing that I did not like. So the edges um, were just not aggressive enough for my taste and they would sort of engage and disengage in weird moments and places. And that very much reminded me of the Mamba. That's kind of how the Mamba would respond. And I, did, I just didn't like it. It would sort of auto eddy out in the middle of rapids. As a matter of fact, when in the middle of Koei RMX video, you'll see before I even get to staging eddy, there are two times where I've sort of gotten auto eddied out. And so when I'm making the ferry at Grumpy's, you'll see some cross current come in from the left. It grabs the, the bow of the boat because I don't have proper downstream lean. I know what's going on and I attempt to do a bow draw off the left side of the boat to turn the, ba the boat back left and keep me going on the ferry angle that I want to. And when I do reach around and twist in the boat, the boat goes farther right it just keeps on taking off on its own little path. And I thought, okay, I'm fixing to run Grumpy's Ledge for the first time. So let's take a peek at that right quick. So yeah, that was definitely not fun. And then there's this funny little moment uh, where I'm trying to get into, uh, I guess that wave is called North Shore, where you're turning and coming down into staging eddy. So same thing happens. I'm trying to move left. Current is coming downstream. I probably don't get a good lean. Um, it engages the upstream edge and like eddies me out. Um, kind of takes me by surprise. I, you know, I'm pointing upstream. I lean, turn the boat back, and point point towards staging eddy. But that sort of auto eddy out weirdness with edges, um, just uh, that's not something that happens in the scorch. The scorch stays on the line. Um, I, I, I guess maybe because it's a little wider, and I'm just used to the edging on it. Maybe I'm leaning better, more properly downstream with it. But the RMX was just a bear. It was just a bear to handle. And then, um, yeah, th th there were just moments where it just, I fought it. I literally fought it. Like the tracking, there are some places on the Ekoe where I was trying to hit a booth or trying to avoid a place, and it was just bouncing me around. So like in Cat's Pajamas, I actually was like, okay, I'm just going to paddle the, an aggressive line through here, and I'm going to try to hit the booth at the end of Cat's Pajamas. And so I come down, I have everything lined up, I'm visually looking at the booth, I'm driving, trying to get to it, and the boat just goes whoop and goes right beside it. So let's take a peek at that so that you'll also understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so I wish I had some side-by-side -side of all the clips that I've shown you of me paddling the Scorch through those same places. Unfortunately, all my archive footage from my GoPro, I dump it. Once I make an edit and put it up on YouTube, 
all those clips I dump it it's a battle to like fight for space anybody that's making YouTube videos or creating anything especially in 4k you know what I'm talking about so I just I dump that I'd love to have some side-by-sides and say hey this is what the RMX did and this is what the Scorch did and you be the judge but anyway long story short life has gone full circle I'm back to the Scorch and I am headed hopefully in a few weeks to the upper golly to get my upper golly pfd all right guys thanks for listening to all this rambling because that's what this has been um but i just kind of wanted to share that just share the creek boat journey with you that i'm that i'm walking and i think hopefully um this is relatable i think hopefully you know you're watching this and you go yeah i've had similar struggles or i've been in a boat and been a little discontented with it and jumped out of it and realized how great it was and went back so anyway all is well it ends well we're back in the scorch thanks for watching